I'm your host, Logan Nordin 3. You're joining me for Red Carver Diaries, Book 2, Chapter 5. Go in public. Persona. Meeting with Hollywood tycoon Victor Montmarty. Went well. Still informed you that you're under new management. And from now on, Chaz is just set dressing. You wake up the next morning feeling anxious. Your first meeting with your new manager is in an hour. At least it's a morning meeting. I don't have to wait around all day to find out what's going on here. You get dressed and head downtown to the skyscraper where Tad works. When you arrive, the entire office is weirdly empty. Interesting posters. I should call out. Hello, is anyone here? What, we didn't po pet our Oshalot to, before we left? How dare you. A man jogs around the corner, a grin already plastered in place. Sorry, I was just getting some coffee started. He extends a hand. Tad Princeton. I was, uh, I like starting my day before anyone else shows up. I use the extra time for really meditate on my clients' careers. Is that how meditation works? No. It is for me. Today, it gave me a lot of mental space to really dig into Jessica Brand. What it's doing right and what it could do better. Or you could just use you, since I'm right here. This isn't you. You, Jessica, and the brand we're building have a lot in common, but they're not the same. For example, I think you personally look lovely, but the Jessica brand might do better with a higher-end wardrobe. Are you going to pay for it because I'm not doing it? Wait. Yeah, ooh, 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 are you buying? I could probably work out deals with a few of the favorite designers if you're interested. I mean, maybe, but why? What's wrong with the wardrobe I have? Right now, you're almost too approachable. We want you to look useful, real, but with more polish than you can buy off the rack. Does that make sense? I guess. Great. I'll send you over some inspiration boards for you to review. Then you can talk to a personal shopper. And I'm sure you'll understand we feel the same way about how you choose your associates, at least publicly. I'm happy to report that so far, you're mostly making the right decisions as far as who you're seen with. Uh, who... are you talking about who I'm allowed to have as friends? Not allowed to have. You're welcome to stay in touch with as many as your current friends as you like. But I'll need headshots and IMDb data from anyone you're considering public outings with. Then I let you know who uh, makes the cut. You can go f yourself. I choose my own friends. Is this guy serious? Which brings me to the last major concern. Have you considered hiring a trainer? Really? Not really. Why would I need one? We've done a little market research, and we think you do best if you slot in an aspirational fit category, appearance-wise. Aren't I fit enough? You're so funny! No, I wasn't being funny. Like, here we go. I wasn't joking. I work out regularly. I don't see what the problem is. Listen, I think you're gorgeous. This is not body shaming, even though it is. Really, because it sure quacks like a body shamer. Like I said, we're polishing. If your arms were a little more of Michelle Obama, I could get you at least 10% more covers. Don't you want to be on a magazine cover? I guess so. But I thought I'd land there because of my career, not my arms. I hear ya. Well, maybe we'll circle back to this discussion after you finish shooting. After all, ah, stunt work you're doing is definitely gonna tone you up. Perfect. Then I'll be ready to fight off pushy managers. Ah, uh, sure. Uh, moving right along. You've got a busy morning. Since when? Well, since I put in calls to all my best contacts around town this morning. 
We're starting with an interview on Coffee with Candy, then the grand opening of a new Beverly Hills boutique, and finally a photo shoot for Shit Magnus Ma magazine. Wow. My eyes went glalala. That sounds exciting. And it gets even better. You'll be doing today's events for Apricot Persimmon, your co-star. Oh god, help us, why? Two up-and-coming actresses taking the town by storm. Can you imagine anything better? Um, drinking acid. Like, literal sulfuric acid. Maybe pour a little in my eyes. <laughs> I can think of a couple things. He heads over to the elevator and presses the down button. So, you ready? We're leaving now? Well, I'm not coming along. I have a lot of meditating to do. You're not my only client, you know. We must meditate very differently. The elevator doors slide open and Tad ushers you inside with a gleaming white grin. Have fun! I can't wait to hear how you do. Before the doors even close, he disappears into his office. To meditate. Outside, a limousine is waiting for you. You slip inside and spot... Apricot. Don't look so happy to see me. I'm not. I'm really not. Sorry. I just... Didn't expect you. Didn't Tad tell you I'd be doing this appearance with you? Well, yes, I just didn't realize that means sharing a car. I know, right? Can they be any more cheap? Chapley. The driver stops by your place. You decide there's only one thing you need to grab. Acid. Tazzy. Oh, Ooh, we're taking our ocean line. Oh, God, yes! Wow, he's actually kind of adorable. Yep. Do you want to pet him? Reaches for timidly and strokes his ears. Oh, my God, you're so fucking cute! She smiles and then looks up at you and grimaces. Stare much? You're petting my kitty! Give me back my kitty and let you shut the... F right now. What? I just thought it was nice that... Whatever. Keep that thing away from me. There aren't enough lit rollers in the world. I... Bite her! Bite her! Go! I didn't see shit. My pleasure. She pulls out her phone and proceeds to ignore you completely. Guess that's my cue to catch up on my social media. Soon the two of you have pulled onto a studio lawn. Security guards direct your limo to a building with coffee... With coffee with candy. God, is that a tongue twister? Painted on the doors. You'll be a good little Tazzy for the limo driver, won't you? Oh my god, you're so goddamn cute. I'm serious. You leave Tazzy with the enamored driver and head inside. Best diamond choice ever. Producers whisk the two of you through hair and makeup. And before you know it, you're sitting on stage across from... Oh, God! <laughs> it literally, like, when I see her, I literally think of Tammy, the, the, the chick from the movie. <clears throat> okay. We're doing this. <clears throat> We're, do <laughs> We're doing this. Okay. Hope this doesn't sound like shit. Your host, Candy Crenshaw. Thanks so much for coming on to Coffee with Candy, ladies. Thanks so much for having us. I am beyond excited to be here. I am such a fan, you wouldn't even believe. Candy laughs indulgently. Always oh, nice to meet a fan. So, Jessica, we've heard all about the new role in Double Agent. Tell us about the movie. Well, it's a classic spy thriller with loads of exciting... Can I jump in and say the villains are the best in the movie? No bias, of course. She winks at the camera. <clears throat> I'll play along. I'll, I'll play nice. Agree. 
Honestly, watching Matt in dailies gives me shivers. He's bringing so much to the role. Whenever he's on screen, it's impossible to notice anyone else. Oh! Oh! What do you think of Matt's performance, Africa? I mean, Matt Rodriguez always delivers, right? Well, it certainly sounds like I can't miss. Obviously, for Jessica, the role is coming on the heels of the incredible success of Ten of Nothings. It was nice to see such a tiny movie get that kind of attention. The apricot smiles sweetly, but you can see the glimmer of anger in her eyes. Candy turns back to you. Is it hard to adjust to such a different style of a movie? Honestly, it's not as different as I thought. It still comes down to bringing the character to life, learning what makes her tick. But with a lot more pyrotechnics this time around. That's a wonderful way to look at it! Sometimes the old pros know a thing or two, Apricot. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for the ladies of Double Agent. Thanks so much for being here! Thanks for having us, Candy. Don't forget, come for explosions. Stay for the best films on the big screen. God, you're gonna make me eat my mouse. Not a literal mouse. It's a it's a mouse you use for your computer. <laughs> oh, oh! I had to. If you guys remember Rules of Engagement, I kind of went with her, but Southern Madeline. That's what I went with. It took me a moment, and it just as it came out of my mouth, I'm like, let's do this. Apricot leans over to wave, blocking you from the camera's view, and smiles widely. Oh, come on, that's just tacky. But before you have a chance to say anything to her, you're being hustled on back to the limo. Apricot immediately pops headphones in her ears, and soon she starts giggling to herself. You sneak a peek at her phone, and only to find she's watching a video of a tiny, adorable hippo. Lower taste in animal videos isn't the worst. Before long, you've pulled up outside a chic new boutique. A line of shoppers snakes down the sidewalk, pinned in by velvet ropes. Are you coming with me, little guy? You hear people begin to murmur as you and Apricot exit the limousine. Is that Jessica? Is she holding an Ocelot? Okay, now I'm definitely shopping here. You wave at the shoppers and head to the front of the store where the owner is waiting. I am so glad you made it. Right this way. She ushers you and Apricot inside, after Apricot turns to pose in front of the store for photos. Oh god, are you doing French? No. No. Q. A divertimento. My pictogram fans are gonna absolutely love this place. Have you heard of Pictogram, Jessica? Or do people your age have a hard time understanding social media? <sighs> she acts like she's 50. Inside a tray of champagne stands at the ready. Chic clothes, accessories are all hung around the shop. Are we here to shop, or...? Only if you want to. I told Tad when we spoke. We were really just hoping to get the celebrity imprinter. Us potential sightings of Hollywood's hippest would go a long way towards securing our ideal clientele. Got it. Um. Should I toast the store? Try something on? Let's try some on. Maybe one of those gorgeous hats or a pair of sunglasses. Great idea. Let me find my favorites. Hand you the glasses and you pose in front of a mirror like you're considering them while she snaps a photo. Can't go wrong with action shot, right? It's perfect. I hope you won't mind if we post it on our social media. Not at all. Feel free to tag me. And who's this little sweetie? This is Tatsy. I'm sure he'd want to you to tag him too. Photos of an adorable baby animals are great for pictogram engagement, after all. The owner is fiddling with the picture when Apricot leans over her shoulder, frowning thoughtfully. You know, that might be even better if I posted on my pictogram right now. I only have a few million followers, but they're super devoted. A few million? You'd really do that? Of course! I think small businesses are so cute. 
<laughs> the owner helps Apricot pick out several accessories and snaps a picture with Apricot's phone. And posted, looks like I'm your first official shopper. Oh my god, the store account is already getting dozens of new followers. Thank you, Apricot. That kind of exposure is just incredible. And you, Jessica. I know shoppers will be thrilled to learn you shop here, too. Absolutely. I know a few... I know I'm a few years older than Apricot. But that means my fans have a higher disposable incomes, right? Our five favorite kind of customers. Wah, wah. She loads you both up with swag bags and heads back to the lemming limo. Do you know where we're headed next? Don't know. Don't care. Starts taking their swag bag. Oh god, I hate that name. Swag. Whoever invented swag can just... Uh, okay? Ooh, I can't believe she gave us non-mink eyelashes. Like, why even bother? She's always the offending eyelashes across the limo, pulling out her phone with a sniff of displeasure. <coughs> it's okay, sweetie. No one's gonna make you an eyelashes. Bolt Azzy into your lap, and he snuggles up under your chin. God damn it, if he's in every chapter, I'm gonna fall in love. Soon you'll pull up to a tall office tower. A sleek woman is standing next to the reception desk, tapping a phone. She looks up when you enter. Ah, Jessica, Apricot, so glad you could make it. Rosanna Navarro, Editor-in-Chief of Schick. She extends a hand and you shake it. Thanks for having us. I get all my fa fashion tips from you. Always nice to hear about a celebrity fan. Probably going back decades, right, Jessica? Oh my god, shut your mouth. Well, nearly a decade since middle school. Ignoring Africa, and you smile brightly at Rosanna. <clears throat> I'm honored that you'd want to include me. Let's head to set and talk about today's shoot. She takes you upstairs to a photo shoot set. Stylists, photographers, and staff writers mill around. So the plan for today is to get a cover-ready photo. It will be accompanying a double agent feature in the magazine. Apricot, I'll be honest, our stylist outfit for you is very similar to what you have on. What can I say? I try to stay on trend. Well done. If you're comfortable in that, I think we'll stick with it. Jessica, the stylists have picked out a look they think will be absolutely perfect for you. Yeah, I swear to God, if it's a two-piece bikini, I'm pissed. If it looks as good as on you as it does on the hanger, we're looking, we're thinking of giving you a solo cover. <laughs> but something tells me it's going to cost diamonds. Oh! Damn, girl! That looks nice. Damn! Mm. What did I tell you in the last video? Which, speaking of last videos, and it's published. I can shoot in these, right? Well, if you insist. Apricot, why don't you stand over here and Jessica, you go there. She points at the locations on the set. Apricot's front and center and you're way off to the side. Great. Listen to the ph photographer. I'm going to supervise the shots as they come in. Fantastico. Can't wait to get started. Where's... Where, do we leave the ocean lot in the car? Rosanna smiles at the two of you and hurries off uh, out of the shot. The photographer instructs you through a series of poses. Actually, Jessica, could you move out of frame for the next few shots? Oh, that's cute. After a few minutes, Rosanna nods at the photographer. I think we have our cover. Just give me a few minutes and I'll pull together a quick mock-up. Mm, just because we didn't get an outfit, BFD. You gather your things while Rosanna orders a few underlings about. Soon Rosanna beckons you both over a mocked-up magazine in hand. Oh, there you are. Just thought you might like to see what we were planning to go with. Why was I here? Where's a celebrity like Robert Downey Jr. to go, Did you seriously waste my time and just walk out? Like, did you did you seriously bring this up and waste my time? <clears throat> I 
the picture she's chosen is only of Apricot. I love it. I'll send some follow-up questions once I talk with the editor editorial. Thanks so much for coming in, ladies. You're a piece of shit. Thanks for having us. She nods and hurries off. The day of you head back out to the limo. You wasted our time. Literally, you wasted our time. You made us come in for this. No, no, no. Think about this. I'm a celebrity. Right? You wasted my time. I am mad. You and Apricot are totally silent during the ride home. After the whirlwind morning, you're both preoccupied with your own thoughts. Before long, you arrive at your house. Try not to be too upset when everyone's talking about me tomorrow. What's that saying? Beauty before age? Why are you so angry, Apricot? I haven't done anything to you. I'm... I'm not. You know, it's not as easy to... I mean... Expresses on an eye, mouth curling into a sneer. You don't know what you're talking about, per usual. Just stay away from me, okay? Gladly. <clears throat> I hate this woman. She slams the door, and the second you get out, and the car whizzes off. Relax a little once you close the door behind you. Finally, you don't need to be on. I think I should stay here and hang out with you, Tazzy. You've just flopped onto the couch when you spot a series of texts from Chaz on your phone. I feel bad for Chaz, man. So I heard about Tad. Congratulations, you must be excited. I'm sure it'll, it'll be easy to work around one another. Or I don't know. I'll figure it out. Uh, I feel so bad. I mean, we didn't do anything to him, but at the same time, like... I feel so bad. Like, it's so... How can I put it? He was thrown under the bus. You know what I'm saying? Like, he was literally and figuratively thrown under a bus. Um... I'm gonna say I'm sorry you didn't hear about it from me. I only just found out. And then Tad immediately sent me out on all these press events. I should have told you, though. Don't worry about it. I know it's not your fault. Can we grab a coffee and talk about it? For sure. Meet at the coffee bean near my office? Be there in 20. Okay, okay. Again, I feel so bad for him. Grab a car and head downtown to the coffee bean. Chas sits in a cozy chair and saw two coffees in front of him. He sees you come in and waves. You walk over. I got you a vanilla latte. Hope that's alright. Okay. Now I feel even worse. I should be the one buying you the tasty caffeine pick-me-ups. Or, you know, an entire pool of wine. I think a kitty pool would suffice. <laughs> Can I have a hug, Chad? In fact, uh, a mob bugger. Uh, this is a worst, a worst uh, mop bucket of wine situation. Well, I guess that's good. The good news. But I still hate that this happened. <sighs> I had no say in this. I would never do something like this to you. Believe me, I know. Castle told me he and Victor made the, uh, decision together. Why consult me, right? Or me. Apparently they both agreed that I'm not up to the job of managing the Jessica brand anymore. And in a way they're right. What? Don't you even for a second think I... Raises a hand, cutting you off. Hear me out. I'm not throwing a pity party, I promise. Uh, but it's an open secret that Victor Monmarty only works with people he handpicks. I'm not that guy. At least not yet. And frankly, we could both lose our careers if we try to dig our heels in here. That makes sense, but that doesn't mean I'm happy about it. You know what? Chaz hasn't met our Ocelot, and I'm upset by this. Why do we not bring Chaz to meet our Ocelot or vice versa? Look, Chaz, at least something good came out of this. Me neither, but they told me I, I could stay on as your agent. Well, that's fantastic. 
Yeah, not so much. I'll be there for you, obviously, and technically you're still a client. Technically? What does that mean? Not a whole lot. Castle basically said he I'd be cut out of all decision making here on out. Well, we have to look at this is a temporary setback. After all, Mont Marty won't care who represents me once the movie's over, and in the meantime I I need my best friend by my side. Well, that was gonna happen no matter what. The two of you hug and when you pull apart, Chaz checks the time. His eyes go wide. I should really get going. We're not supposed to take breaks longer than 15 minutes. Welcome to the normal world. But I'm a client. At least technically. That's true. Well, I can definitely milk a few more hours away from the office for a client meeting. What? Well, this kind of came out of nowhere. Hey, play hooky with me. Let's go play mini golf. You should probably head back. It's probably not the best time to ignore the rules, huh? Uh, definitely not. I hope I didn't get you in any trouble already. <laughs> Don't worry. If things go south, I'll just say you needed more time to discuss the upgrade to your career and uh, to the agency standing. Did he really call it that? I know. The whole sentence is without screaming even once. The two of you laugh, Chav stands and gathers his things. Thanks for being such a good friend. I was... Well, I was afraid this might ruin things between us. Are you kidding me? Never! I'm gonna take a lot more than a Montmarty brand Ken doll to split us apart. Let's... Let him do all the work. We'll focus on general slaying. Per usual. You hug and Chaz heads out. You take a few minutes to finish your drink and head home. You've only just made it through the door when your phone buzzes. Dad's calling. What are the chances? He's planning to tell me I'm scheduled for three massages and a solid two hours of bubble baths. Wow. Yeah, that was my guess too. You pick up. Hello? Jessica, I'm so glad I caught you. I only just got home. I'm assuming you want to talk about up the appearances? The appearances? Of course not. For Jessica, not backwards. It's the best business plan and a solid strategy in polo tournaments. Right. What were you calling about them? I prefer to talk about it in person. So much easier to focus my mind on the right meditative goal that way. I'll send a car to bring you to the office. Really, dude? I mean, I was hoping to... That's great. Let me guess. Yep. Great. The car's on the way. He hangs up abruptly. Good thing I have a choice in the matter. Soon the car is pulled up outside and whisk you downtown to Tad's office. You head inside and see Tad at his desk. What took you so long? I can't instant transmission and it it it, it was a car. You're the one who sent the car. Just then, you notice the other person in the room sitting quietly in the chair in the corner. Chadley, what are you doing here? Mostly sitting right now. I was drinking a Viva Vitality Mega Green Smoothie. But I finished it. IQ points are dying quick, abort, abort. So, Dad, um... What's so important? We just saw each other a few hours ago, and I've been meditating on that the entire time. Oh my god, this is your job? Wow. I'd like to get paid to meditate. Jesus Christ. And that's how I came up with this phenomenal plan of attack. What plan are you talking about? Chadley stands, he's grinning like a, well, a Chadley. It's pretty rad, Jessica. Try not to feign or anything when you hear, though. I only know CPR on TV. <sighs> okay, additional question. What does Chadley have to do with this big plan? 
that's the best part. Chadley is the plan. Victor and I have decided that the two of you will become an official couple, starting now. <laughs> it took me a moment. That's funny shit. No, seriously, what's the meeting about? No on every level, no. No offense, Chadley, but I just... I don't think of you that way. Oh. Okay. Do you ever think of me as a firefighter? I've always thought it'd be cool to be a firefighter. You frown, baffled by Chadley's everything, but he doesn't even seem to notice. That's because he's called an airhead. I'm going to challenge you to meditate your way to a yes, Jessica. I'm going to meditate my way to putting my foot up your ass if you continue with this meditative bullshit. Thad folds his arms and fixes you with a gaze. Uh, all I was going to say is he's starting to meditate because the answer is still no. I assure you, we've completely serious about this, Jessica. It's an excellent promotional opportunity for double agent. But I don't want to date Chadley. That's not a problem. The relationship doesn't need to ex actually exist. It needs to be exist in the press. And it doesn't bother you that it's flat out weird to be forced to date someone? How can I make this clear? You're not dating. You're just appearing together and letting the press speculate about your relationship status. It's basic PR. Speaking of which, the team figures it would should last uh, until uh, maybe a week after the movie opens. Possibly two, depending on returns. After that, you're free to go your separate ways if you don't think there's any further mutual benefit, of course. Why not set me up with Matt? We want to promote the movie, and Matt has a bigger role name. No offense, Chadley. It's okay. My name's Longer. I get his last name now. I get it. Numb, and I want to add nuts. <laughs> oh, God. That's true. Ish. Matt's playing a villain. We found a good guy bad guy relationship don't test as well with potential moviegoers besides hooking up on your second movie that's gossip value does that have that's not the point yes it is entirely so try to view this from a chance at your perfect craft uh, you'll be acting even after you leave the set i'm sorry but i'm not comfortable with this well, and I'm sorry too, because this is non-negotiable. Perhaps you didn't read through all the fine print on your double agent contract, but promotional considerations are stipulated. But this is a relationship. This is an ad campaign. Alright everybody, look away from your screens as I beat the shit out of this guy. You know what, hold on. Oh, shall you got you got it. Okay. Mother... And you... <laughs> and you will appear in it. Or your contract will be cancelled. I'll take that as a yes. And before you go, I think the two of you should make a official pictogram. And just to avoid any confusion, that's also non-negotiable. Can I just call someone first? I'd rather they hear it from me. Your actual special someone? Well, yes. Of course, call away! And make sure you mention that they can't be seen alone with you publicly, at least not without a, a non-romantic explanation, until this campaign is finished. I'll try to slip that into the conversation. Oh! Non-diamond choice. Oh, shit. <clears throat> okay. Well, so far I have mainly persuaded after Matt. I mean, we did do a diamond choice... Um, with Tisha, which was... And we did... No, we didn't do one with Seth. But Matt, for the most part. So I'll call Matt. He is Matt, after all. Tad watches you from the doorway, expectingly. D you need to watch... Leave. Leave the room. I'm your client. That's non-negotiable. 
a little privacy? Of course. Chad leads Chadley out of the office before closing the door behind him. Matt picks up immediately. Jessica, just the person I was thinking about. To what do I owe the pleasure? Well, that's the thing. This is going to be kind of a tough call. Oh no. Was the meeting with Mom already a bust? You're still in the movie, aren't you? It was good, actually. Except, he assigned Tad Princeton as my manager, and apparently Tad's expecting me to start dating... dating Chadley. I know you and I haven't really taken the plunge romantically... yet, but I really like you, and I don't want this to ruin our chances. Oh. I guess I should have seen this coming, but honestly, it never occurred to me that they wouldn't just set us up. Wait. You knew this might happen? I don't know exactly, but I mean, you remember my relationship with Alyssa Griffin? Our people orchestrated the entire thing. Right. I can't believe I forgot about that. Obviously, I hope this wouldn't come up, but I'm not exactly surprised. You know it won't mean anything, right? Dad talked about the whole thing as an ad campaign. It'll just be stage photo ops, a couple lunches, where paparazzi happen to spot us. That sounds about right. I just wish they would have chosen me. It would have been a chance to let the world know. He trails off. Now what, Matt? I was gonna say that we really care about each other. Although I guess we haven't really talked about that. We're talking about it now, and I feel the same way about you. Really? You think this is something special too? Definitely. And believe me, a couple posed photos with Chadley are not going to change that. Yeah, have you met the guy? <laughs> like, seriously? Oh, I have met myself every day in the mirror. Oh, okay. That's really nice to hear. I don't think I'd have worked up that guts to say that for a long time otherwise. Silver linings, I guess. So, are we good? You're okay with me going ahead with this? I mean, obviously I wish you didn't have to do it. But I know that it's just for show, and I trust you. And it... Let me tell you something that I've been thinking about for a long time now, and I really wanted to say. So, yeah, I'm okay with it. Thanks, man. That means more to me than you know. Yang up the phone, and you can't help but smile. Putting it into words has left you feeling a little glow all over. You take a couple deep breaths to clear your head and then open the door to the office. All good? More like dealt with. Great, then let's kick this relationship off with a bang. No. Wait, you don't mean... Get your mind out of the gutter. I didn't mean it that way. Besides, people like that are so down market. Reality TV level at best. So, are you two ready for your close-up? Of course, man. That's on my bedroom wall. Oh, God. Oh, yep, yep, the right side of my face has stopped working. It's the brain cells have all died. We're talking with our left now. If it continues, I can't further continue this. He raises his hands up, painting the words in the air. Live every day like someone's about to take your close-up. It's motivational, you know? I'm pretty sure Jesus said it first. Yep, alright. I can't read now. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god <laughs> he is the dumbest mother ever right anyway I want you two over here he grabs a remote off his desk and presses a button a screen drops down from the wall featuring a beautiful beach backdrop really he gestures for you to stand in front of him wow that's so weird does this place double as a 90 or 1980s glamour shoot studio when you're not setting up fake couples? 
Of course not. Yours isn't the only beneficial relationship I've helped manufacture. That's why I have loads of backdrops. Intimate, restaurant booth, mountainside, ski lodge, pastoral meadow. I can create weeks of developed romance without even asking my clients to leave this office. That's not making it sound more normal. He shrugs. You do your job. I'll do mine. You and Chadley move in front of the backdrop while Tad fiddles with his phone. If you kiss me or touch me, I'm breaking your limbs. All right, so I'm thinking you two should uh, touch foreheads, eyes closed, and I'll make sure we spot the ocean between your profiles. No. How many times has he done this? You, Tad, looks at you expectingly. You move close to Chad. We, you, you can't take that picture. Finally, someone's making sense. This is my bad side. Well, my, my less good side. Unless I part my hair differently, but that would take a, a, at least an hour. Then switch around. Tad swirls his fingers in the air, and Chadley swaps spots with you. Once you're in place, Chadley leans his forehead against yours. All right, three, two, kill me, one. Stay stone-faced and try to sabotage it. Tad snaps a photo, then taps the phone, peering down at the image. That's, uh, unexpected, especially from Jessica. But it really works. You both have the model-esque blank stare-down. All my exes say, I have a really good blank stare. That's because the lights aren't even home, or on, and the no one's home even. Or, you know, that I do it a lot. That's basically like saying I'm the best at it, right? Sure, Chadley. So much for the plan. Tad holds the phone up to you so you can inspect the image. What do you think? Picture I'm ready, or should we try again? Honestly, I don't care what picture you choose. This one works for me. As a draft image, obviously, I'm going to have to do some touch-ups. Tad, do you have a face fixer app? Uh, what do you take me for? I've got face fixer, pretty fi- Oh my god. Freddy fi me, and best selfie. Are we best friends? Uh, definitely no. Oh, at least he's smart. Chadley shrugs and Tad hands him the phone over to him. He starts tapping away at the phone rapidly. Don't worry, Jessica. I'll take care of your jawline and the weird nose shadows and... Oh, don't you dare touch my goddamn face! No need to explain it all, Chadley. Just do what you do best. Push-ups? Yeah, push-ups. Push-ups. With the picture, Chadley. He nods, hunching over the photo to work his magic. Dishearten you flop onto the couch near the door. Everything alright, Jessica? No! No, not in the slightest. Everything about this feels wrong and gross, and I don't see what any of this has to do with my talents as an actress. Well, that's your problem right there. What, integrity? Thinking talent plays into this in the slightest. Tad leans over to you conspiratorially. Why do you think Victor wanted you for double agent? Because he liked me in Tinder Nothings. He told me himself that he saw the p incredibly potential in me. Right. Potential. But that's a lot bigger than just acting. I'm not sure I understand what you mean. Victor doesn't invest his energy and resources in actors. He invests in growth opportunities. It's like the stock market. You spot something that's undervalued, investorly, re reap the rewards once it reaches its full potential. But that's horrible. You're talking about people. He shrugs, obviously unfazed. That's the biggest stars aren't just people. They're commodities. But the good news is your future is looking bright. Before you know it, everyone will be clamoring for their piece of Jessica. Just what I've always wanted. Mm. Your new manager, Tad Princeton, is making sure the Jessica brand is on the rise. Really? If he was making sure, we wouldn't have needed to pay for an outfit that was hand-given to us 
in the thing to get on the cover or not. How is that a f getting my brand on the rise? It's not. And the only thing you have to give up is your identity. Stay tuned in Red Carpet Diaries to learn what's in store for you next. Oh, God. Right, what we're going to need to do is, is uh, next do a sex tape with you and Chadley, have it released. It'll be like, and then what we're going to do is just release it as desire on set. And it basically, since the world thinks you're with Matt anyway, and it kind of suspe suspicion, so it'll be like you cheated on him. And they love drama, because that's how the world is. But they love it, man. Yeah, man, I'll be all for that. And that's when I, that's when I look at choices and go, no. I'm serious. No. Anyway. <clears throat> Poor Oshalots. They had to hide from such things. When I started beating, you know, the shit out of Tad. You didn't hear shit. They were they were going and, and eating catnip and enjoying their days and, you know, looking out the window. <laughs> I love cats. Anyway, with that being said... I hope y'all did enjoy the video. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. Head down to the description below. Links to social media, our Discord, and a few links to support me and my content. It's greatly appreciated. Also, if you are subscribed or gonna subscribe, make sure to hit that little bell next to it so you'll receive notifications when I upload content. And also, we will be live streaming here in just a little bit, so feel free to check out our Twitch. You guys will get to join me live for Chapter 4, or, well, Episode 4, of uh, The Walking Dead. And it's the um, Frontier. Basically, we're waiting for final season. That comes out on 8-14. And then that will be it for The Walking Dead, unfortunately. It is, again, the final season. Which is kind of depressing, because it's, it, it's a really good game and a really good storyline. A lot of choices and things like that. It's really fun. Without further ado, thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace.